Well, hello everyone. I'm <clears throat> back with um, small blitz. Uh, well, blitz long long play where I explain my ideas because obviously it seems to be quite popular this series. Um, and I'm also a cheat detector. Half the players I've played have been thrown out of the site for cheating. And uh, I'm playing an Indian guy here, similar rating to me. And because now you can purchase my London DVD and play the London system, which I did mention uh, needs a little bit of updating. I'm going to do either a YouTube thing or, or a chess-based video. I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick with the the London system set up. Bishop f4, and we we discuss this a little bit more and uh, go along with some of the ideas I, I've put out in in the the previous YouTube videos. So my opponent's playing. Um, a solid system. This is basically this knight f6 and e6 is often a way that black aims to um, get into uh, systems, Queen's Indian, Nimzo Indian stuff like this. And I'm just going to go knight f3. He, he can go d5, he can go c5 in this type of structure. It depends. It's up to him what he wants to do. The other idea is to try to put the bishop on b7 where it's doing a good job of, um, should we say, uh, attacking, defending the central squares. So he's gone for c5, and as in the London system, if you see my videos, we now create the pyramid. So I'm going to try to place my pawns like this. Now, there's a little tricky move here um, after this b6, and this is a trick I haven't mentioned yet. Now, knight d2, which I'm going to play quite quickly, is a bit of a tricky move because in some positions I'm threatening and I think he's allowed this this move knight to c4 and this is something well worth remembering guys this is a very interesting way of playing um as soon as they go b6 and c5 without playing d5 so if they've left their pawn on d7 this idea of going knight d2 to c4 is a sort of trick which I found to be quite nasty for black. Black has to be quite careful um, in this type of position because I've got ideas of knight d6 check, a little bit uncomfortable. If he goes d6, I can take on c5, and then d6 is on pre. If my opponent plays d5 now, well, my knight can come to e5, and look how good that knight's become. It was on G b1. And if I can get it all the way into this e5 square, which is the main square you want to place your knight in the London system anyway, it's very good. So this little idea, if your opponent plays this move order of c5 and then b6, I recommend you go for knight d2. And if he's not paying attention, let's say if he doesn't play a move like d5, this move knight c4 can cause him some problems quite, quite early on in the game. Now... I'm not saying that it's it's winning or anything like that, but it just it just really you know from what is supposed to be a very solid opening, the London system, we're already causing a lot of uh, things for our opponent to think about. So we're pressuring him in an early stage of the game. Um, now I have some announcements to make at the end of the video. If you can be bothered to stay tuned and listen to them, I'm coming over to America actually only for a weekend. And uh, let me see if I can get this up. Oh, that didn't work. Excuse me about that. I'll try to... Oh, here we go. There we go. That's better. So I'm coming over to uh, London for a weekend. Uh, sorry, America for a weekend. And I'm doing a chess festival there with Bob Long, who who is a, seems like a very nice guy. He runs Thinkers Press over there. And um, if you want to contact him about this, go to Bob the Chesser. I think it's in Iowa. There's some details if you search Bob long chess and here you go here's my thing and a bit of details you can see below there uh, about it but i'll tell you a little bit more uh, about that later on my opponent's still thinking about what to do though so i'm basically in a weekend in iowa and i'm going to be doing um a couple of things i'm going to be doing a uh, talk so i'm going to be trying to teach you know some stuff and i'm going to be doing a simul um so i think you guys if you live in america you might be interested in taking part in that okay so now well, now I have a couple of ideas. I could go knight d6 check straight away. Uh, bishop d6, he castles. I like knight d6. I could also take here first to increase my control of this square. So take on c5, takes check, takes, bishop takes here. My bishop looks very good there. But do I need to rush into playing that? No, I like knight d6 check. And 
Um, I mean, I don't know how good this 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 idea is of mine to play like this. Um, it's well, he has to take now, doesn't he? I don't know why he's spending so long. I, I always get a little bit worried when people spend a long time on obvious moves because you probably know why. It's like, you know, <clears throat> what does Fritz say? I'm not saying that now. I'm just paranoid. By the way, when I get back from Iceland, I'm going there this Saturday. Um, I, I will be taking some of you guys on in in. in um, some time you know in in this type of time limit so you know um i will definitely take you on because i know you guys are not cheats i'm not saying my opponent here is at all i'm just a little bit paranoid after some of the previous experiences i had okay so um now i could just retreat the bishop and say i've won the bishop pair i could also try to keep a hold on this square i could take on d6 pawn takes d6 and then maybe something like knight e5 to c4 that looks like an interesting way to play. Um, I think I'm going to go for that one. Uh, I've got to be a little bit careful though, because he's got some threats against this one. Then knight here, queen f6 or queen here, queen f6, f3. He has a check here. Takes, takes, takes the rook. I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, taking here does does look like the right way to to continue. Taking, taking. But I get rid of my pyramid. I mean, a much safer way to play is just moving my bishop back and saying, well, I won the bishop here. Give me long-term prospects. It's a bit of a longer... That's a longer way to play the position. So I'm thinking, do I just retreat and play a long game? Or do I try to keep causing him problems by leaving my bishop here? And the only way to do that is to take here, which I'm assuming here, take back. Then I'm thinking he wants to get rid of the bishop. So his next idea will be to go queen b6. Now, I can meet that idea with knight e5 because... If in that position he goes queen b6, I can go knight c4. And that looks to work quite well for me. But I'm, I'm just now being put off by the idea if I take knight e5 of his queen coming somewhere to attack f2. So I'm not worried about queen here. I've got g3. Oh, even then I'm worried because he's got knight takes g3. Um, well, can I move my queen out to defend it? It looks like it's a bit... No, it's interesting. Queen f6, queen... Okay, let, let's try it. Let's try it, because it's the most interesting uh, way to continue here. Um, to try and keep this wedge on d6. Obviously, if I can maintain this bishop here, then I'm going to be quite quite happy. But this is a quite a risky way for me to play as well, because you know I'm opening myself up to his queen coming out here, and I'm also opening myself out to his queen coming out here. These are the two things... Which, actually, you know, the more I look at this now, the more I'm actually quite worried about his queen coming out here, which was my concern anyway. I mean, queen here, g3. Takes here. I can take with this pawn. Should be okay. But what about queen f... Queen here could get very complicated. f3, qu then queen here, check. And then I was hoping I could sacrifice with g3. Knight takes g3. Pawn takes g3. I'm assuming then he will go queen takes h1. And in that position, maybe I can just play king f2. And claim to have good counterplay. Because I've managed to maintain my bishop here, meaning he can't castle. So this is certainly, you know, if you ever get some decisions like this in a game situation, what you've really got to do is calculate all these lines... If you think you, you like the positions that are coming from it, really, you have to be very careful, then go for it. But it's risky because you can see, you know, these lines are get making, they're changing the nature of the game from a solid London system in, into something incredibly tactical, um, which could backfire. So you, you need to be brave. I'd say in general, if you want to improve as a chess player, you need to take these brave decisions. You know, you need to take risks. You need to get into calculating deeper and be willing to to uh you know spin things up a little bit because um you know they, they're going to backfire at times no doubt about it but it's a good way to improve and people start to fear you as well you know you, the more risks you take the more you understand when these things are going to work and not going to work the more your instinct improves so you know i, I could have just retreated my bishop and say i've won the bishop pair bishop pair generally should give a, a nice small advantage in the long term um but this is the most testing, so hence why we're doing that. So, okay, so another thing uh, I'd like to mention, just while I wait for my opponent's move, is 
if you do, I've, I've mentioned this before, if you do go to the Full English Breakfast page, if you search Chess, the Full English Breakfast, which is a new podcast I'm doing, if you click on this thing here, Brains and Brawns, and uh, this is one of the last podcasts, for a very limited amount of time in that podcast, there is a discount code which you can use in the Ginger GM shop, which I think will give you 20% off anything there, like the full collection, you know, a DVD. So if you fancy, you know, if you want to buy a DVD from Ginger GM and uh, you're looking to get a discount, then this is a good time to do it because the discount code is, is available. I should also thank for this beautiful backdrop behind me, absolutely astonishing backdrop. And um, I really hope I pronounce this right. Pidon Rosa um sent me this do keep sending me your backdrops i will use them uh, uh, thank you very much pedone is spelled p-e-d-o-n-e -E, and then surname r-o-s-s-o -S -S thank you so much for this beautiful backdrop of macau tao looking rather freakily up at me hi macau hi hi and uh i don't know you know maybe this is pedone over my other shoulder but i i think it's uh I think it's a fant fantastic backdrop, so do keep sending them in. And my opponent having a, a very long think here, because of course he's got a lot of things to work out. So, um, so like I said, my general aim is to get my knight to c4. This is why I put my knight here, because it's all about trying to booster this bishop here. If my bishop maintains in that square, my opponent can't castle, and my bishop cuts him in half. It completely cuts his position in half. So that's why I've moved my knight here because I'm just looking at ways to maintain my bishop on this square. Uh, so this is my, you know, if I can get a couple more moves in, knight here, maybe just get castled, I'll be, I'll be very happy. So let's have a look. So how can my opponent act against this? Well, this check here is another thing I, I had to I look at, and I thought I could go c3. And if knight takes c3 there, you have to always watch out for these tactics. Well, I would have queen d2. Now, this is not a move I, 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 I considered. Um, I missed this one. Uh, now, I can go knight c4 again. Um, I've also got moves like c4, but then there's a check. King e2. It's getting very wacky position. Very, very wacky disposition. Um, have I got a weird move? Bishop c4. My gosh. Bishop c4, knight takes hit, knight, bishop takes d5, pawn takes d5, queen takes d5. I'm a piece down, but I'm attacking his knight, and I'm attacking his rook. So tactically, that would be a great way to play, because I develop a piece, and I try to get rid of this bishop, which is a pain in my bottom. So bishop c4, I think, is positionally the move I, I want to play. So... Is it working though? Bishop c4. Now I got to, you've got to really be careful about such ideas because of course they don't work. You just lose a piece. So let's calculate that again. Bishop c4 takes takes on d5. Pawn takes queen takes d5. Check is nothing. I attack his knight. If he castles, I have a choice. If he goes knight here, I take here. If he goes queen e7, I go queen takes a8. In that position, that looks good. I quite like that. So bishop c4, I'm going to check a third time. Knight takes d6 first, because I want to make sure that his first obvious choice is not something to scare me. So knight takes here, takes, takes, queen takes. Now, does he have a move like queen d6, queen b6, or anything else that that I, I'm not worried, I'm worried about here? It's f6, I take... F6 is maybe playable from him. Takes, 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 check, queen e7. Peace up. Okay, so bishop c4, knight takes d6, bishop takes d5, pawn takes, queen takes. I want to calculate as deeply as I can because otherwise, like I said, I could be losing f6, attacking my knight. So if I take his rook, he takes on e5. And I don't like giving him the two knights for my rook. I don't don't want that to happen. So I need to find a good move after f6. Otherwise, I'm going to have to cancel this variation. Now, I could just move my knight. Knight to, for example, f3. Move it back when I'm still attacking two of his pieces. 
And if queen c7, I can still take there. That seems to be uh, seems to be working. So bishop c4, what else can he do? Can he go queen b6 straight away? Well, then I go bishop takes bishop, pawn takes, queen takes d5. And if queen takes here, queen takes here. If knight takes here, queen takes there. Uh, a check here. Well, it's a bit annoying, but I can move my king. Now, bishop c4 looks to be okay. But I'm really, I'm really just, you know, really want to make sure because this looks like an incredibly risky move. Bishop c4. Now, if he takes knight, takes fantastic. I've got everything I want. Bishop c4. The two moves I'm worried about are knight takes here. Let's do that again. Bishop takes. He has to go pawn takes. Queen takes. F6. Let's say knight f3. And a check. Does that help him? Check f3, no, uh, queen e7, I take on a8, looks safe, queen b6, I can maybe even castle still, oh no, I can't castle because knight b7, but I can take on a8, and uh, he can give me a check, and I can castle eventually, so bishop c4, queen b6, bishop takes d5, pawn takes d5, queen takes, queen takes d5, now knight takes here, queen takes a8, looks quite critical. And I think I'm all right. Let's go for this. I, I say this tentatively because uh, I, I'm, you know, I've entered into these complications. My, my opponent's played very quickly there, uh, threatening mate. And, okay, well, I mean, this is a move I saw. I thought I always had knight g4 against this worst case. Um, so castles now. I should have obviously, you know, calculated this a bit deeper. Or do I go f4? f4 consolidates my knight. So knight takes here. Takes, takes, queen takes. I'm trying to get his rook. Knight c6 I can take and I get quite a lot of pawns there. Knight g4. In this position, queen takes here. Frustrating. So, castles takes here, takes here. I think f4 is pretty much forced here. Um, yeah, I think I don't, you know, just this, I, I, I underestimate this one. f4, check, g3, takes, takes. Also, looks quite good for him. F4 check. G3 knight takes. Pawn takes. Mm. Takes here. King here. Might just be okay. Very murky. So, okay, let's see what happens here. Um, I think this bishop c4 is a, maybe a bit of an error on my my part here. Um, you know, I've entered into these very complex things when maybe I, maybe I should not have gone for this so check g3 knight takes pawn takes queen takes here check king to d2 and I've got king c1 not so worried about those variations here it's a very tactical game this one not like the last positional one we had knight takes d6 okay this is a bit more worrying bishop takes here pawn takes queen takes knight c6 takes pawn takes check king e7 check king to this square queen takes c5 i'm always going to get f some pawns but he's quite solid i can castle queen side there and I, I i retain quite a lot of pressure so it kind of looks like this is you know i've played this risky strategy so i've got to stick to it and uh i've got to stick to 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 what i'm trying you know from from the outset you know going going trying to keep this this bishop here by taking on c5 has entered into these complications where really you know you you just you're taking a risk because you don't know if they're going to work out you've got to follow your instincts if you can't calculate everything and instinctively it looked like the biggest test to my opponent so it, it's kind of the critical variation that's why i wanted to play it because it's you know critical right in there right i'm testing you i'm testing my opponent but uh, of course um these things backfire sometimes so okay so he's got i think he's got two options he either checks me here or or he takes on d6 now if it's my move i'm probably just going to take on b8 and take on this square this is what i want to do 
Now check here again, g3, knight takes g3, pawn takes g3, okay, you can take my rook with check, um, actually isn't that just quite good for him, actually this check is just very good for him, but I just miscalculate, simply g3, knight takes, and what was I thinking there, that's strange, knight takes there, Kind of mis miscalculated a little bit there. Takes, yeah, I, I forgot he just takes my rook rather than takes on g3. He takes my rook here, and he's going to be an exchange up. Um, you know, I'm worse there, but I've still got this big bishop here. So if he can't get rid of that bishop on d6, even though that's the thing, even if I lose an exchange and a pawn in, in some lines where he goes here, it might not be terminal i mean I can't, i've got to go g3 because if i move my king he's just gonna well check king here that's kind of not gonna work i have to go g3 he goes knight takes g3 now can i flick in a bishop takes d5 there then he goes knight e4 check i let's say go king here check king here uh, pawn takes here well, that's a wacky position, that is. Don't trust it. So I, I want to go g3, takes, takes, queen takes here. King d2. And then... Well, he can check me then, can't he? And... Check me on g2. Or just take me yeah, a check me on g2 is, is annoying. Queen e2. And if he tries to get greedy with queen takes at g3, he's two pawns in exchange up. It's a lot. Is there a way I can generate? Well, I can got my queen coming over to you. It's very, very complex. I mean, definitely a lot of, lot of calculation needed here. Uh, you can see why my opponent's taking. He's gone for the, mm, the, the best move. Now, the other thing I was thinking is if I go here and knight f3, well, I've got to go g3. I have absolutely no, no choice in the matter there. Now, takes knight f3. Bishop takes f3. Queen takes f3. Knight takes h1, check. And then I just move my king. That is very interesting position. Very interesting. Knight f3. God, this is complex. Knight f3. Now. Now he has to take on f3, I'd assume, there. Because after knight f3, he moves his queen. I can take here. I mean, he can take there, but I take his rook. So knight f3 takes, queen takes f3. And if he moves the knight, knight e4, check. King here knight takes d6 queen takes queen takes here my king's still very exposed there though so the other option is to take here then queen takes here king d2 uh but i think knight f3 oh well takes takes check king here um queen takes h2 king here King takes, king takes uh, yeah, this is not looking good, actually. So, knight f3, takes, queen takes, knight takes here, check. King to this square, g1, maybe. Knight here, queen takes here. Any compensation there? A little. Um, so, the other option is taking, takes here, give up the exchange this way. Um, and he will check probably, and I don't know. I mean, that seems like a simpler way to play. Queen here, queen takes g3. I keep my knight then, don't I? Okay, I'm going to try this one. Let's just see. I don't know. We'll, we'll have a look at the other option after the game. And and of course, this is uh, this 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 way of playing. I, I'm just trying, even at the cost of a lot of material, to keep my bishop on this square because i kind of think even later on in some 
sort of end game positions this might not be this might not be so easy for him because i'm going to pick up another pawn and my pieces get you know they're they're they're, they're maybe better than my opponent's pieces but i mean i don't know i mean it, it, it must be better for him so you know again when you enter tactics a very risky way to play they can backfire uh because my opponent isn't exchanging a pawn up here but i do have this fawn in his side meaning he can't coordinate the two sides of the board you know meaning that his rooks can't can't come into the center uh easily so um he's also spending a lot of time um on the position okay so here well i have to take here now this is this is completely forced um and now i've got to move my knight so knight d3 is is the way to play this i mean i'm, I'm banking on getting at least one pawn and my opponent's trying to now simplify somewhat so okay so i'm exchanged down but I might be able to get one pawn back. I might be able to win this pawn here on d5. My bishop's quite strong. And I've got some pawns of his I can target. It's like a7 is weak. d5 is weak. But, I mean, I agree that, you know, this should be better for him, of course. I mean, even if I get my king coming up. I mean, okay, if I had a pawn on h2, I'd be quite confident here. Uh, the way you should play this when you've got the rooks against the, the minor piece. So the way my opponent should play this is um i would say by trying to you know he could do this straight away trying to get a rook in the game this is something i'd be thinking another thing he could do is to go for g5 and then just try and be able to capture on h4 with a pawn so creating a pass pawn on this area of the board so th these two things these two two ideas um would be the way i'm playing with black and i'd play this quite quickly i'd probably go h5 first and then g5 because it's a simple plan if you've got a simple plan that causes your opponent problems why think of anything else just go for the simple plan easy to play you know don't overcomplicate me you don't need to so against h5 well i could start bringing my king up okay so he's trying to um maybe put his king on this square to do, to to get everything he wants in the position now king something like King to e2 here. This check is it? I've got here as well. Here, king f3. Got e4. So king here. I'm a bit more worried if I move my. Okay, let's go for this one. I, I like this one. I think my king coming up is not so important as allowing my rook into the game. Now, I'm thinking about a couple of things here. g4. But then I'm sort of helping him get his past pawn g4 here e4 takes check okay i'm going to go for this one um i want to be able to play a five check i think so of course he's played this and now i want to play c4 or e4 so c4 takes check king e7 here check here and give him another check here is it is c4 or e4 a better idea here takes check king e7 i have no good discovered check which is just a pain i got g got this one now which do i want this poor okay i think i want this one so i'm going to go here i want to get my rook uh into d6 in this this position um you know if if i play anything slow now you know i i'm i'm gonna probably just lose this game because now he's got a very simple idea of pushing h5 as soon as he gets a pass pawn with his rook behind it, it, it looks a bit tricky for me now the only move i'm worried about here is king e7 actually stepping into a discovered check um when i'm thinking about playing this g5 move there so it gives my rook a bit more room the other thing i can do after king e7 is just try to move my king slowly in when all my pieces are still coordinating this bishop has always been a great piece so he's gone for this so g5 he will take i'm going to move i'm going to move slowly like this i'm going to try this this way because i'm going to keep 
the option of some discovered check. I'm going to keep the fret. And now I've always got B4, I was hoping, in, in this type of position. So I'm going to play B4. I don't need to think about that too much, B4 move. Um, and I've still got this discovered check. His king can't move anywhere easily to get out that discovered check. And if I, I mean, my pieces are coordinating very well. Okay, as predicted, he, he's going to play something like this. So now I just want to keep control of this area of the board with a3. Now there's a little trick here. Oh no, it's a double trick. He can go check because if I go rook d3 check, he goes rook takes c5. And then we get a rook ending. Rook takes a3 and I should be okay in that rook ending, but I think I just take the pawn. You know, again, the threat is stronger than the execution. So um, should he be going this move then? Well, then I get two pawns maybe. I can take here and my piece is coordinating. So my bishop is a very strong piece. So even on an exchange down, I've kept this pressure on my opponent throughout the game. I've always had some sort of initiative. I mean, I know he, he, he seems to play very well earlier on with his queen coming down, grabbing some material in the corner. We've got this interesting ending where what's the material? Well, I'm exchange and a pawn down. I didn't realize that. So I'm a lot of material down. So it should be bad for me, this. It should be. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm not denying it should be bad, but I, I've it's easier for me to play. And this is the thing, if you're drifting into a bad position, so he's gone now, okay, for, for a rook and pawn ending, um, which I'm a little bit surprised about, actually. Um, but this is a very good move. A very, very good move. Um, and, okay, well, I can still... It'd be very hard to win this one because I'm a pawn down in the pawn rook and pawn ending. Um, so obviously I might might actually now. Oh, I totally forgot his rook defends that one. That was obviously again rather silly of me. So okay, well let's let's keep playing. Obviously we keep playing. I mean uh, I should be able to hold this one. Should. Is given to will, uh, of course. Um, and I'm not sure if this was the correct way to play as well, even. So, okay, well, I'm just going to sit here for a little bit. I will win this pawn back at some point, but I want him to sort of go d5. I want him to play d5 because then, then, uh, you know. Okay, so he, he's playing for a draw now. I don't, you know, if I take here, the problem is if I take here, takes here, something like rook f6, he can check me on c4. Then I go king here. I mean, it's a dead draw if I play that. So m maybe this, maybe this, this, you know, I have to just take the draw here. Um, I'm a pawn down and a rook pawning. My opponent's played well. Um, I went for this risky line and it's backfired. So, well, I mean, my opponent should be trying to win this. He has pawn up after all. I mean, it would be, you know, it's, but he can't. I don't think, I think, you know, most rook and pawning is drawn as, as long as, you know, and this one is probably no different. Now, if he goes king c6, rook here, is there any way he can try to win? I think his pawn's too weak on this square. He's gone back, all credit to him. Good. Well, I'm glad he's playing for a win. That, I, you know, that shows, shows a... That he's a brave player um so well yeah i mean definitely all credit all credit to him for going for it now maybe he should go h4 and of course he should be trying to win he's a pawn up and he, i think he can maintain his pawn you know through some tricky move like h4 which i can't take he's played it so we're gonna have to go for more exchange of pawns here see i still in my back of my head want to keep winning chances this is why i don't want to give up either of my pawns because i just lose you know all winning chances i might have but i really don't see any option here uh, apart from giving up a pawn still pretty confident about drawing the rook and pawn ending um is there any other way i can try to keep my winning chances well here he's going to push me back and uh, that's not good can i get my rook around here that's interesting. Try to, you know, if I want to really go for a risky win, rook here. Well, he's always got king f7 then. 
No, I, I think I've got to I've got to go for more pawn exchanges. You know, when you're a pawn down, you're trying to draw rook and pawn endings. Uh, you know, one 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 thing worth uh, bearing in mind is the more pawn exchanges you make, the nearer to a draw you get. So I'm going to um, try to just exchange off some pawns here. And well, that last move is his looks quite quite a mistake to me because check I got c4 well he's giving me an extra tempo he's still going to take this pawn and it probably won't won't change the position so much again what am I doing to play this normally you want to keep your king in front of your opponent's pawns luckily my opponent's pawns are all in the same area of the board in this rook and pawn ending if they if his pawns are more split it might be a bit trickier for me to draw because my king wouldn't be able to control them um and other things to bear in mind is keep your rook as active as possible so if his king comes too far up the board then I, i'll try to move my rook behind which uh, i'm going to do straight away i'm going to i'm going to move this one in immediately giving me chances of checking here um hopefully that will help me um and he does have a check himself let's move my rook to give me some checks on this side of the board i just want to keep my rook as active as i can and give myself uh, as many you know active checks shall we say uh keep my rook quite severely i mean this is this must be a draw so i didn't win this one well played from my opponent got to give him credit you know sometimes these guys play very well and you know i probably shouldn't have gone in for this interesting variation earlier on uh we'll have a look at it again uh um you know uh, maybe I, I, I even put it well the computer won't like my play I'm sure but uh, people ask for my computer assessment but the whole point of these videos I, I think is to avoid is avoid using a computer because I want to put my own thoughts across whether they're good or bad and okay I haven't played excellently in this game um, but it, it's you know I don't want to use a computer because it's all about verbally explaining the ideas I mean computer is not going to verbally tell you why why things are right or wrong my verbal explanations are, you know got me to grandmaster standards so I, I i don't want to use a computer i think that's going to go against you know i can verbally go over the games earlier on but he played very well he played some good moves and i my bishop c4 move earlier on which i was humming and hawing about proved not to be a great idea actually uh you know his queen f6 was uh was was a strong way of meeting that and um you know that 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 sort of uh, uh after that point I, I i've probably been struggling somewhat okay so now i can just move my king up or i have this check here check king f4 if he wants to try to win and he's also trying to activate his rook so he's playing this accurately I think I'm just going to keep my king as active as possible. I'm going to save a check for my rook. I don't need to commit my rook to a check at this moment in time. Um, and well, it's probably time to start eliminating some more pawns. You know, the more pawns you eliminate, the, the nearer to a draw you get. Um, And his king's just his king's just not active enough here, I think, to 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 concern me. You know, it, it it it's it's really not on a great square. You know, I really, I mean, I shouldn't be even thinking about trying to win this position, should I? But I'm tempted just to test. Well, I mean, there's no way I can even test his end game skills here. Um, I mean, you know, he can still. I mean, he should be playing on. Okay, he's played on. He's found the correct move. Rook here. And now he wants to go here and pawn here. So let's give myself an option of checking on this square. And I will have to repeat yet again. Unless I put my king on this square, which is the wrong kind of way. If he goes rook d6, okay, so he's gone here. Now I want to put my pawn on c5 because it stops this check. His king is very passive, but he's, he can, you know, maybe he's got some chances actually. I mean, I I shouldn't write off his position. I'm being a bit too. Okay. Well, 
I want to come across and take that pawn. I mean, the thing is, when, when you've got a passed pawn, if he gets his rook behind a passed pawn, then he, he, he certainly improves his chances. But my idea will be, okay, now here I can come in this way. And see how he's going to defend this guy. This is why I've got my pawn to this square now. I mean, he can he can push, but you know, this is probably the best way of him playing. Uh, I mean, rook f. I'm just thinking about rook f6. Now rook here, and the king and pawn ending. If I move my king and take this, is 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 got to be a draw. Um, and the problem he has is again his king. His king is just not active enough to to uh, to be able to to uh, win. I mean, another point. If I exchange another pair of pawns here, it becomes very very simple. You know, my my job is pretty easy then to draw because my king is in front of his pawns. That's the thing to remember: keep your king as active as you can. Keep your rook as active as you can. So I'm going to aim to exchange off now. Only thing to avoid. I don't want to go into a, a king and pawn ending straight away. It might be a draw, but I, I don't want to risk it. If I'd have gone rook takes, he had a check. He could have taken off rooks. So I don't want to calculate that if it's draw or not. I mean, I could calculate if I got a bit more time. But the simplest way to draw this is get my king back in front of that pawn. And then it will be absolutely peanuts to draw um as long as i don't blunder it's probably about okay he's offered a draw and of course i'll take the draw there so all right so my opponent played well obviously it's going to be hard to get to 2500 now maybe i should lower the bar to 2200 <laughs> um but he, he he played well and uh, you know sometimes you can't push too hard so we had this interesting opening uh, we'll look at the ending again a bit later. I'll show you some just things you need to know to draw. And, you know, after bishop here, well, I think the check makes perfect sense, doesn't it, um, to get the bishop pair. Now, after knight e4, I think, you know, maybe a safer, better way to play this position, if you ever get this yourself, is just to keep my bishop. Let's just say I keep the bishop, and here I continue with standard moves. I've got the bishop pair it might, you know, that might give me some nibble and an advantage. Uh, the way I played it, I just wanted to, I've never looked at this line myself, so I wanted to try and test it out. And then what, what better way to test something out than in uh, a fun game online? This is what you guys should use games online for, testing out ideas and then checking them afterwards, was uh, this check. And now taken on c5. Because otherwise I can't maintain my bishop here. And now his idea is, if I don't do something quick, he's going to go queen b6. I'm going to have to move my bishop. He will castle. And he's got to have a fantastic position then. So the only way I can try to maintain my bishop here is by doing this plan of knight c4. Now, bishop d5 seemed like an excellent move, actually. This, this, this idea of moving the bishop here. And I kind of think this is the first key critical moment. And... I probably went wrong now. Uh, so let's see if I can improve on, on uh, my play. Maybe this idea just doesn't quite work and my opponent show me why. Because bishop c4, I seem to drift into a bad position. Like I say, you know, even though my opponent's much lower rated, if they play good moves, then you've got to give them more credit. And he, I think he did. Um, you know, you guys can check this at the computer yourselves, but it, it's, it's, it's hard if your opponent plays good tactical moves. And I think he's playing the best kind of stuff. So should I just go knight c4 anyway? Why didn't I really consider that? That's a bit silly. Why didn't I just consider this one straight away? Well, the reason I, I, I did consider it is that after takes takes queen b6, even though I've got two bishops, I can't maintain my bishops. And he's threatening this bishop. And he's also threatening queen b4 check, winning a piece. So this, this position... I didn't like it seemed like his activity um is just too great here it's too great and I can't maintain my bishop here which is the one thing I've been trying to do um so it's annoying I have to keep going back every time I uh, do a variation okay so uh, bishop c4 I'm sure is wrong though 
Um, I mean, maybe I just have to take on b8, but then I'm going to be worse. So, okay, so bishop c4, and now I'm, you know, this queen f6 move, I just missed the, the strength for this because he's threatening this one now in a lot in a lot more dangerous way so i'm wondering again if i played the right choice here i mean could and should i have castled so if i castle the reason i didn't do this was because a knight takes d6 bishop takes d5 and now oh maybe i should maybe why didn't i do this then I was thinking that he, he could take on e5, and I was thinking here he had two knights in my rook, but I'm going to exchange up. So why didn't I castle? That's silly. A little just miscalculation there. I should have spent more time at this moment. You know, I was only looking at f4, but I should have certainly spent more time because obviously castling is a much better move to do. Maybe this is the way I hold, you know, this is the way to play the position. I keep the threat of this up. He has to take on d6. I take here. Now, if he takes here, queen takes d5. This is not looking so bad for me, is it? I mean, he can castle, though. Ah, this was the line. Yeah, I just... Uh, but this this is this is a bit of a mess. I take here. He takes here. And then maybe I take here. And I don't generally like these, have, you know, playing against the two knights. But this is probably what I should be doing. And, well, this is... This is, this is okay isn't it um so in the game well uh, uh did i miss anything else f4 played and this the reason i played f4 is because i want to defend my knight compared to some of those other variations now check here here now knight to f3 was the other move i was looking at when i thought he would take on f3 and now move some check either knight e4 or knight takes h1 one of these two Knight takes h1 check. I thought I could try. Maybe I can't because he takes here. And then do I have a good move there? I mean, I've got two bishops. Buff play. I really don't know. Such a strange position. Um, I think he's doing well here. I, I mean, he must be doing very well there. Um, so that's why I kind of forced the way things went, realizing I'd been exchanged down. Um, uh, but the ending's not, not, you know, I mean, the, the position I've got to defend a little bit, but he's got to be a little bit careful as well. It's equal material, but he's got these problems with the pawns. And I'm, I'm just wondering if I could play this position better. I mean, he plays good moves. He plays a5. He tries to activate his rook. This is This is certainly the best way to play. Now, after a5... He can always sacrifice this way. This is the problem. And this is exactly what he did. And it's probably just a draw uh, in, in, the way, in the way the game turned out. And I think I, think I, I don't have anything better here. Probably, probably the way I played this is, is, is okay. Uh, you know, given a chance, if he doesn't reset the exchange, I think this is actually a, fan, a, a very good move he played. Because if he doesn't do this, I think my bishop is going to be really problematic. I've got If I get time to go king takes here, g5, I'm suddenly, my bishop's probably stronger than his rook. So I actually think the way he played this, taking here, was good. And then going rook c3, and this is a very good move, rook c3, because now he's going to win a pawn. Uh, of course, it should be a draw. I'm not going to look at the rest of the ending, actually. I can't be bothered uh, too much more. But it, it's uh, he, he played very well, so all credit to him. And, I, I'm, you know... It's, it's, it's fair, fair. If your opponent plays well, you've got to up him as a draw. So, okay, slight setback there, but um, I'll, I'll be back with more games very soon. So let me tell you, if you want to try to get a discount for the Ginger GM shop, then do go to this website, the Full English Breakfast. And if you listen to the last podcast, um, do download it. You can play it anywhere. It's here, Brains and Brawn. Uh, we talk about the blindfold blitz blindfold champion timor we talk about chess boxing we have a bit of fun uh you'll get a discount code for the ginger gm shop so you'll be able to get a 20 percent off if you're interested in buying a dvd that means you get dvd for about six pounds you can get about six hours of uh discount code which I think it's a pretty, pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, amount. And also, I am in America, and uh, just to again show you uh, this, uh, 
Okay, where are we? Um, here. Let's see if I can just make this a bit bigger. Um, uh, okay, it's not it's not brilliantly looked at, but you can see the dates there: August the 18th to the 20th. I'm I'm going to be over in America just for a weekend, my first visit to America, so I'm I'm certainly looking forward to it. But I think it's going to be more work, hopefully a little bit of play. And if you want to find out if you you know if you can make it there, then email uh, Bob Long. Uh, this is Bob Long. Okay, you'll find his email address. Um, here it is. Here, info. This one here, info at chessbutler.com. You can email Bob um, about it. I think it's $150 to register. Um, and, well, it's some of the details are here. You can just check out Bob's website. Um, 150 but that includes a whole day of tuition well you get to we get to, on friday i think we're going to have a meet and greet so down i think a pizza restaurant where we just have a chat so you come along to that if you want and you have a bit of food on saturday it's a whole day of me doing showing you some lessons and it'll be fresh material stuff that i haven't used here so you'll get really good you know a whole day of tuition with a lunch break you know with me on a demo board so i think it's pretty good value on the sit on sunday you then get to play me in a simul and you get to ask questions afterwards. So um, it's like a whole weekend of chess with me for $150, which I think sounds pretty pretty good deal. Um, so do there's Bob's contact, contact details there if you want to inquire about that. I think it's in Iowa. I haven't really checked out, you know. Uh, and it's chess festival. Let's see if we can get it's, uh, more, more uh, details. I think it is. Oh, yeah, here it is. The, the details, it's in Davenport, Iowa. Um, so um you can't see the the other side of that so if you live anywhere near there even if you fancy flying in for it then uh, i'm sure it'll be great fun okay well cheers and um i don't know how many more videos i'll be able to do because I, i'm off to iceland soon i'm going to be doing um a i'm going to record my adventure i've hired a, a mini camper for four days before the commentary i'm commentating with fiona over there so i'm going to be away for about two weeks not doing videos but i'm going to record a, a daily sort of blog which i might post up here no chess stuff just a blog of me in iceland in a camper van so that could be quite cool as well but thank you all for tuning into this and uh yeah well played my opponent and uh, i'll be back with stuff at some point i'll try to get one more video in before i go uh, maybe I'll, I'll do that later on today and post it for some other time. But it's going to be a bit of a break now and probably all deserve a break from me, I think. Goodbye for now.